hey everyone uh, welcome to this video in this video what we will do we will take our front end application and back end application and deploy it to azure app service using github action so what is github action github action is a ci cd tool which is available as a part of the github ecosystem and what we, we are going to do in this uh, video is we already have a front end and back end application from our previous video which is uh, written in Node.js. So we have a Node.js based backend API, we have the front end created in the React. And what we will do, we will push this to code base to GitHub. And what we will do, we will write a GitHub workflow, which will automatically trigger when we push these changes. And it will build our application and it will connect to Azure and it will deploy our application to Azure App Services. So now how GitHub is gonna connect to Azure? So this is the one interesting challenge which we have. There are a couple of ways uh, which we can do, but we are going to choose a very efficient and uh, secure way to do it. So Azure has something called Azure Managed Identity Federated Credential. What it will do, we have to configure in this Managed Identity. Hey, if GitHub want to talk to using this Managed Identity, uh, Azure will automatically allow and it will allow it to access any of Azure resources. And whatever the permission which we will grant it it can uh, do all those activity okay so as a prerequisite of this whole uh, tutorial what i have done i already went ahead and created our uh, to do app front, front end app service as well as the back end app service we don't have to do anything you, you just create these two app services in in any of your app service plan only in the front end application as our front end application is purely react uh, static site we don't have any node.js server or anything running what we have to do we have to come to the configuration and we have to tell app service when the app service will boot up it has to just locate this uh, static application and start it as a single page application okay so this is a command i'll put it in the uh, description of the video you can just take it and paste it and whenever this front end application will boot up it will boot up our react application okay so simple uh, we have two app uh, service and what i have done this is only the first time which you have to do to make a github talk to azure once this is configured uh, then you can use this setting in any of your workflow within that same repository you don't need to configure this again and again so what I have done, uh, you just go simply uh, in the search and you do managed identity and I just went ahead and created this managed identity resource. You can create it in any resource group. It doesn't have to be in the same resource group as the app services. And uh, one interesting thing is uh, this federated credential feature which we are going to use. It is not available in all of the region. Uh, so I have tried in East US too and it is working as expected so you can also either play around and figure it out in which region it is supported or you can just uh, provision this managed identity in east us too once we have this managed identity resource provision uh, just go to federated credential and here we have to configure and tell azure hey if github action wants to talk to azure using this particular managed identity you just allow it okay and the way we have to configure we just go to add credential and we have a couple of scenario in our case we're just going to select the github action deployed azure resources and here you can leave it uh, issuer as a default whatever we have and there are a couple of fields which you have to fill in organization you fill your organization name if you are using a personal github account you can just put your uh, github username and in repository you type the repository uh, from where your github actions are going to run any entity you can just select the environment and you give environment any name uh, and this environment we will go and create it in the github once you fill all this information here you can put any name you can just say azure token or anything and then you just uh, click on apply i already have this uh, configure so here you can see i have my organization this is my personal account and i have repository courses repository and in entity uh, i selected the environment and uh, as an environment, I put production as an environment. And now what we will do, this is pretty much done from the federated credential configuration perspective. Now we have to do one more setting. Now because we created this managed identity, but when you create this managed identity, it doesn't have any permission to any of your Azure services. So what we have to do, we have to go to Azure role assignment. 
and then uh, you can just click on add role assignment and scope wise you can either give it a subscription level resource group key vault storage you can go as granular as possible but in my case i have given a subscription as a scope and then i selected my subscription and in the role what i have done i have selected the contributors what it can do it can create update and delete resources this is as per your requirement you can give as granular permission as possible but in my case what i have done i already uh, selected the role as a contributor and resource name as my subscription and resource type as a subscription once this is done you have to copy three things from this particular manage identity first is you have to copy this client id and the subscription id as well as the tenant id so first we copy this client id we copy this particular subscription id and then uh, if you just go to your search and you type tenant uh, properties uh, you can copy your tenant id from there as well so yeah so this is my uh, tenant information and i can just copy this uh, tenant id and you can just keep all this information in notepad or somewhere we are going to use this uh, when we configure the environment in the github now we have all this information client id tenant id and the subscription id what we can do we can go to our repository so this is my repository from where i'm going to run this github action what you have to do go to settings click on the environments okay and what you can do you can in your case you just click on this new environment and you just give the name of the environment and make sure when you created the managed identity and when you configure the federated credential you have provided an environment over here these two value should match so whatever the name you have given over here uh, in my case i have given the production as the environment name we can just have we can just go and put that name over here and i already have one environment called production okay once you have this environment what you can do you can go and add something called environment secrets and you simply click on this add environment secret and one by one you have to add all three values one we have client id tenant id and the subscription id so here you can see you can put any of this name uh, uh, whatever the name you like but in my case i have put azure client id azure subscription id azure tenant id and this is important because when we are going to deploy and log in in our github action what we are going to do we are going to use this value so whatever the name you want to give just uh, make sure you note it down so this is it for the configuration between azure and the github and once you complete this you can talk to azure from your github action now what we will do i'll just go ahead and explain you all the workflows which we have so in our case uh, we have this uh, front end application uh, uh, which is a to do app react and the back end application and what we are going to do we are going to because we are deploying these two things to a separate uh, app services what we are going to do we will have two separate workflow so what you can do in your root of the repository or root of uh, the content of your repository just create a folder called dot github and then you can create a folder called workflows and then inside that you can create a yaml file so let's uh, first go and talk about uh, how we are going to deploy the front end this is a very lengthy file but i'm going to go step by step so that we will understand this much better okay let me just collapse this okay so first of all we just we are just giving the name of our workflow this is this will be visible when github will run our uh, action in github action this is something we call it trigger so when this workflow should be triggered so what we are saying whenever somebody will push into my repository in the main branch so if in this repository if somebody commit any changes or there is a pull request and then pull request is completed and if it is done in the main branch we want to trigger this uh, particular workflow because i have so many folders or projects in this particular repository in this case what i am doing i am also putting a path filter what path filter do i am saying whatever i have in this folder if those files are getting modified then only you trigger this workflow as well as if this workflow itself get modified or if somebody change anything in this workflow then you go ahead and trigger this particular workflow we have defined one environment variable this is a simple environment variable where we are just defining the version of the node and this is something uh, really interested which is a permission so when this workflow runs 
we can control what all permissions we are giving it to do any of the operation related to the github so in this case i'm just saying content as read so what it can do it can read our repository as well as for azure login what we have to do id token as write so that this workflow can go ahead and use the token and write to our app services whenever we are going to deploy our application okay now the next thing what we have to define we have to define the jobs we can define as many as job we want but in our case i'm just defining uh, one job called build and deploy so this job this one job will take care of building the application and deploying okay so here what we have to define uh, runs on so the github actions has so many uh, flavors of environments so for example if you're building uh, something related to the windows application or a mac application you can choose all these things so it has a mac os image as well as the windows image as well next is environment in this what we are doing if you remember we created a production environment which has all of our uh, secret related to the client id subscription key and the tenant id so we are just using the name of the environment and this url part is optional uh, what it will do once the application is deployed it will just pull out the web url and it will uh, present when the workflow is completed to the page and this is the default because as i have uh, so many folders here what i'm saying hey whatever you do any of the operation below make sure the default of this repository is set to this particular location now this is a standard uh, github action we are just checking out the repo so this uh, particular step will check out the repo into that particular virtual machine and then we are setting up the node.js environment so here we are just defining whatever the node version uh, we are using this cache and cache dependency path is optional uh, this will help uh, whenever you run this build multiple time it will help uh, us to speed up the build because the github will cache the node modules and everything next what we are doing we are just running the npm uh, install and npm run build uh, remember this is for the front end application and npm install will install all the modules and npm run build uh, compile the application and give us the artifact now next what we are doing uh, this is a very important step this is where we are logging into azure so you remember we created this secrets into the github if i go into the github and environment you remember uh, we have created this environment secrets so we have to put all of those information over here so i'm just saying azure login uh, this is the action which we are going to use this is uh, readily available on the github action marketplace and then we have to give the client id we have to give the tenant id and we have to give the subscription id and you just do secret start and whatever the secret name you have given on the github environment uh, secrets and once you put all this uh, it will automatically log into azure and the next step which we have is deploy to azure web app and again we are using a pre-built action which is provided by azure to deploy web application here what we have to do we have to give the name of the app service so if you remember if i go here we have the front end as to do dash app dash front end and you just simply put uh, the app name over here and the second is uh, packages and the packages is when we build this application we know that inside this to do app react a distribution folder will be created and that will have our html css javascript and we will just take that and we will deploy to the web app so this is the workflow for the uh, front end application and now i'm uh, similarly going to go and now i'm similarly going to go and show you the workflow for the back end application here also pretty much same we have name we have uh, when it should trigger these are the path i'm only worried about whenever if we do any change in the api folder whenever we change anything to this particular workflow file then only i want to trigger this and also the changes should be pushed to main branch otherwise the workflow will not trigger we have environment variable we have similar permission a content read for reading our repository and id token to write it to azure and here also i have a simple job called build and deploy and similar thing we have environment as production we have default uh, and here i have set the api folder path to be set as a default working directory we are checking out we are setting up the node environment and then here we are just doing the npm install we don't have anything to be built over here and once the npm install is done we will log into azure using uh, this azure login module and then we'll provide our client id tenant id subscription id and then what we will do we will deploy to azure web app and here we are just going to give the application name and the package name and the package name is going to be whatever the content we have in this api folder 
so once you have both this file you can just commit these changes to your main branch i have already pushed these changes to my github account and what it will do if i go here and uh, you just open your repository and you can just click on the actions now here you can see i have these two workflows one is the front end workflow and one is the to do back end workflow i already went ahead and tested this two workflows and to make sure everything is working and expected and i deployed this workflow and if we go into this front end application uh, and if i click on the front end url you should see the front end app should be running as expected if i go into the back end you can see if i if i go to to do's uh, you can see all the to do's are working as expected and uh, in the front end you see we can just add uh, you can say hello from azure hello from azure and we can just add it and we can even see it in our back end to do list now what we will do uh, just to show you how this two thing will work what we are going to do we are going to modify this uh, file so that when we commit these changes we can automatically see this available so in api what i will do so we have this two default api uh, whenever the application is up and running we have this two default api automatically what i'm going to do i'm going to add one more to do and we'll give the id as three and we can say test to do app three and this should automatically add it and then as a part of the front end what we are going to change i already have this app.tsx and just to test uh, the content i added this to do list uh, uh, one to three we're just gonna say one to three and replace it with updated and then you just save both of this file and you will see i have this uh, app.tx which is a part of the front end and this api changes and i can say uh, updated api and front end and you just commit your changes and you can just uh, push it to github as soon as these changes are pushed what will happen both of our workflow will automatically start running okay let me see yeah it is pushed if i if i just refresh this particular thing you see my backend automatically got triggered and it is running as of now building and deploying and similarly if i go to our uh, front end you see the front end is also running as expected so now we'll wait for these two workflows to be completed and then we will go ahead and refresh our front end and back end application to see the changes are reflecting or not this might take a couple of minutes to finish this workflow so we'll just wait Now we can see uh, both of our workflow, the front end workflow as well as the back end workflow is completed. If I go into to do front end, uh, this updated API and front end workflow is completed. It took around 53 seconds to complete, and the back end also completed. It took around 1 minute 48 seconds. If I open this particular workflow, we can see it will automatically give us the back end URL. And if I click, it will give, give us all the steps which we have put it in the workflow and you, you can go ahead and expand and see if you see any error or you can debug all this information. And similarly, if I go to the front end and if we click on this, we will get the front end URL. You, we can click on build and deploy and we can see all of our uh, steps running as a part of this workflow. So let's see if the changes are reflecting or not. Uh, when I click on the refresh, uh, you see uh, we got to do list updated and we put our default to do's as one two three and if we refresh we can see the to do uh, test to do app and one two three which is automatically updated as a part of our deployment if you want to learn more about azure login and you want to see like what are the option which we can configure so that the github can talk to azure i put uh, this documentation of the azure login uh, action uh, you can go ahead and read it and you can see there are more ways which we can use to do the authentication uh, thank you so much this is what i have for today and i'll put all the links in the description below